Thanks for starting your week with us. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Ijeon in Seoul. Before we get started, let's first get a quick check of today's highlights. It's not unusual in Korea to see people checking the air quality daily on their smartphones, and scientists from Korea and the U.S. have teamed up to examine what's causing all the air pollution. Convenience stores are not only providing people with snacks and beverages, they're now able to let people open securities accounts and do a lot more at their ATMs. These stories and more coming right up. But first, we begin in Korea's legislature, where the newly elected 20th National Assembly kicked off its official opening ceremony this morning. Addressing the full assembly, President Park Geun-hye called on lawmakers to work with each other and her administration to get the economy off the ground. Our Eunice Kim starts us off. High on President Park and his address at Korea's 20th National Assembly was the challenging times facing the general public. Recognizing the struggles of young people due to the tough job market, their parents' generations over retirement concerns, and those of small and medium-sized businesses because of the difficult economy, President Park urged the newly formed parliament to cooperate in passing bills directly related to the people's livelihood. She called reforms a prerequisite to a labor market that works, noting that without a proper social safety net, the country's restructuring efforts cannot achieve optimum results. Addressing the shipbuilding industry's restructuring for survival, President Park noted efforts must be proactive and principled in the drive to make the sector more efficient without hurting its leading position on the global stage. As for private firms and their creditors, she cautioned their restructuring must be self-initiated and thorough, and that the government needs to do its best to minimize the impact on regional economies, partner companies, and the newly unemployed. 정부는 일관, 일관된 원칙 하에서 투명하게 각종 비정상과 부실을 반드시 바로 잡을 것입니다. President Park also called on the new parliament to support deregulation efforts, saying only having the required rules was key in reinvigorating the economy, particularly at a time when the country is nurturing new industries in search of fresh growth engines. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. And to tell us more about last week and this week's stock market action, we have our Business Daily Markets contributor, Che jin Suk joining us on the phone today. Hello, jin Suk. Thanks for having me, Jun. All right, let's get started by looking at the Korean stock market. Tell us about the last day of trade and the market's overall performance last week. Okay, uh, the Kospi fell by 0.3% to close at 2017, continuing its losing streak for two sessions. The Kosta rose by 0.2% to close at 706. The Kospi index saw its intraday loss in deep to 2014 level, but recovered somewhat in the late hours. The main driver behind the sluggish trend was foreign investors who shifted their stance to sell for the first time in four sessions. Individual investors dumped 110 billion Korean won or more than 93 million U.S. dollars worth of stocks on Friday. On a weekly basis, though, the Kospi enjoyed a 1.6% rally. The Bank of Korea or the BOK's decision to cut interest rates, followed by capital inflows from foreign investors, helped boost market sentiment. Then how did the Korean stock market close on the first day of this week? Both indices of the Korean equity market fell sharply on the first session of the week. The Kospi plunged under the 2000 level, while the cost had plummeted by more than 1%, sliding below 700 as well. Fears over the so-called Brexit, falling oil prices, cautions over the Federal Open Market Committee or the FOMC, and the potential inclusion of China's A shares in the MSCI Emerging Index all dragged down sentiment among investors. By sectors, share prices of major securities bumped 
steeply, while Lotte Group shares were down sharply as prosecutors widened their probe into the country's fifth largest conglomerate on lobbying and slush fund allegations. And in the spotlight this week is, of course, the Fed's monetary policy decision that there's been so much talk about. That's right. All eyes are on the U.S. Federal Reserve and Chair Janet Yellen's press conference. The Fed will hold its FOMC meeting this Tuesday and Wednesday local time, so Korean investors will see the results by Thursday morning. It is widely expected that the Fed will hold its benchmark interest rates again. Because of last month's surprisingly weak U.S. employment report, experts believe the Fed will be reluctant to pull the trigger. The CME Fed Watch, a futures market betting on rate hike cycles, now sees only a 2% possibility of a June rate hike. Although the FOMC results for this month may look relatively clear, market participants still want to take a close look at Chair Yellen's press conference as well as the Fed's economic projections. The language used and specific forecasts can all provide hints on the central bank's future policy direction. Now, this Wednesday, index provider MSCI has an important announcement on China that a lot of investors will be watching. And we hear that Korea is also making a bid to enter the developed markets index. So do we have an idea of what the results will be and what the implications are? Yeah, right. Uh, if we start with the inclusion of China A shares in the emerging markets index, it would mark something of an international rehabilitation rehabilitation for mainland stocks is included. But a decision to delay again will probably mean that it still has a lot to work to do to align its market practices with international norms. China already accounts for 26.8% of the MSI, MSCI EM index via shares of Chinese companies listed elsewhere, mostly in Hong Kong and New York, included since last November. According to the Financial Times or the FT, if all A shares were included at their full weight in the MSCI EM, China's weighting would suddenly jump to 39%, implying more than 180 billion U.S. dollars of A share buying from investors would track the index. Odds vary among watchers. Goldman Sachs last month raised its probability to 70% from 50%. HSBC puts it at better than 50%, while Citigroup is more specific at 51%. On the same day, a decision will be made on whether to add the Korean stock market index to the watch list of MSCI's developed market index. If Korea is listed again as a candidate for its developed market index, there is a high possibility of a final inclusion as early as June 2018. But of course, we'll have to wait and see. This has been Chai jin for Business Daily. Certificates of origin issued for China-bound exports have jumped sharply since the Korea-China Free Trade Agreement went into effect in December. Korea Chamber of Commerce and Industry on Monday said it has issued nearly 31,500 certificates of origin since the end of December through May. Now, this shipping document is used to prove that the exported products are wholly obtained, produced, or manufactured in a particular country and is important in determining tariff treatment. The Chamber of Commerce says the surge in certificate issuance shows that more Korean exporters will now benefit from lower or no tariffs under the Korea-China FTA. Meanwhile, certificates of origin for chemical goods, machinery and consumer products made up over half of those issued during the state of period, while none were released for the shipbuilding industry. China's gross debt-to-GDP ratio exceeded that of the United States for the first time at the end of last year. According to the Bank for International Settlements, the total debt-to-GDP ratio for China's growing debt pile was 254.8 percent, topping the U.S. 250.6 percent. According to analysts, the upward trend of China's debt is expected to continue, crimping economic growth in the near future. China's ratio of household debt against its GDP also jumped to about 40 percent, while government debt to GDP was at 44 percent. 
Meanwhile, Korea's household debt to GDP ratio sitting just over 88 percent is the highest among emerging economies. And with the central bank's recent rate cut to a record low of 1.25 percent, there are concerns that these levels might climb even farther. China-based smartphone producers swept eight of the top 12 ranks in the first three months of 2016, contradicting earlier reports that suggested China's smartphone market was slowing. According to a report by market researcher IC Insights, China's Huawei, Oppo and Xiaomi were in the top five after Samsung and Apple. While Samsung Electronics and Apple surpassed the other companies by a long shot, their total smartphone shipments are expected to decrease slightly by the end of the year. Five of the eight Chinese companies are expected to log a 29% growth to 135 million units. India's Micromax made the list for the first time, knocking out China's Joni from this quarter's top 12 rankings. Korea and the United States have come together to jointly study air quality here in Korea. They just wrapped up the first phase of a multi-million dollar project and already have some findings that are helping the country see the root cause of the problem. Our Shin Zemin has this report. It's an aircraft packed with scientific equipment and, more specifically, the complex tools needed to study air quality over Korea. They call it a laboratory in the sky, as this 50-year-old jet has been completely redesigned and refitted with filters sticking out of its windows and air tubes spread around to collect air samples from ground level to hundreds of kilometers above ground. Called the Korea-U.S. Air Quality Study, or Chorus AQ, the joint research is the first time NASA has teamed up with an international partner this time Korea's National Institute of Environmental Research. And together, the team is conducting a collaborative study by tying together aircraft, satellite and ground-based measurements to measure air quality on the Korean peninsula. This DC-8 turned into flying laboratory has taken a total of 20 flights over Korea in the past six weeks. That's much more than initially scheduled as the air quality system has been much worse than expected. Korea ranked a lowly 173rd out of 180 countries in terms of air quality on this year's Environmental Performance Index by Yale University, a result caused by decades of rapid industrial development and polluting power plants. When we were coming down to land, what we assumed was the end of our flight, they actually couldn't see the runway well enough. And so they veered off at the last moment and is just a sign of how turbid and how hazy the atmosphere was at that time. Korea has long accused China for much of the air pollution in the country, saying yellow dust blowing in from the deserts of Mongolia and northern China has caused such hazy and congested skies. But the scientists crisscrossing the skies over the Korean peninsula say that's not strictly the case. We have seen a lot of pollution coming from local sources, petrochemical plants, uh, coal plants, um, and we've also done a lot of flights where we've tried to look at the influ external influences coming from the Yellow Sea, um, and so we're still looking into those data, but we have found that on, on a lot of days where we've had stagnant air, we have seen a lot of emissions from Korea itself. And Researchers say that with the current level of air pollution, there's no doubt it's very detrimental to the health of the Korean people. But one thing is for sure, this study shows the Korean government realizes the severity of the problem and unlike many in the region, is at least seeking ways to help the nation breathe a little easier. Shin Zemin, Business Daily, Osan. The use of one-time password verification systems and security cards will no longer be mandatory for online and mobile banking here in Korea. The Financial Services Commission said the revised ordinance, which gives financial institutions greater freedom to use other means of user verification, will go into effect on the 30th. With this, banks and other financial bodies will be able to roll out other fintech tools to provide safer and more convenient options for their customers.
Alternative methods are likely to include fingerprint authentication, mobile ver verification, and use of other security apps. But some industry watchers say it may take a substantial amount of time until financial institutions are ready to introduce new security tools proven safe enough to replace one-time password generators. In the year 2000, the first 10 automated teller machines that offered only very basic banking services were installed at convenience stores here in Korea. But 16 years later, these ATMs can do so much more, potentially meaning that people might barely have to go to the banks in the near future. Our Lee Joo-young has more. Convenience stores in the country may gradually be transforming into mini banks. As the internet increasingly becomes the core of financial services, Koreans are now able to open new bank accounts or apply for credit cards through convenience store ATMs. Take brokerage firm NH Investment and Securities. It recently partnered up with BGF Retail, the operator of the nation's biggest convenience store chain CU, to install ATMs that allow people to open securities accounts at their stores. Shinan Bank also partnered up with BGF Retail in a bid to diversify its business and get ahead in the competition with other banks. It has so far installed a digital kiosk at one CU store that can confirm the user's identity with iris recognition or fingerprints and allow people to have debit cards issued or their passwords changed, all which were only possible at brick-and-mortar branches. Experts say this comes as financial institutes try to take advantage of the easily accessible convenience stores spread out across the country, creating a tight network. The number of convenience stores in Korea exceeded 26,000 as of 2014. Along with this, full-fledged bank transactions at convenience stores are expected to become available from the second half of this year, when the country's first internet-only banks launch their operations. Lee Ju young Business Daily. And that wraps it up for today, but we'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. So don't forget to tune in then. Thanks for watching and goodbye.